November 7th is my father's 99th birthday. He's entered his 100th year. Uh, what an amazing journey. Billy Graham has always been a man of milestones, and he's really reached a new one this 99th birthday. Most people say he's America's pastor, but that so understates it. If you interview people and who do you most admire in the world of, of everybody, whoever, you know, Billy's always at the top. How he persevered over a long period of time, I think that's impacted me the most. He was intentional about his life. He was intentional about his calling. He never veered off from being evangelist. A model of spiritual proclamation and of spiritual integrity. He was used to being with presidents, but he would be just as kind to somebody that was serving him lunch. There was a kindness about him and a gentleness about him and a welcoming spirit about him, which is reflective of the gospel. He answered the questions, but it always came back to Christ is your savior, Christ loves you, Christ is with me. Humility, integrity, and generosity. Billy Graham showed all three. I think Dr. Graham's birthday should be a, a time for us to reflect. For many years, I've had the privilege of being Mr. Graham's close friend and personal pastor. And so one can imagine the wonderful conversations that we've had together over these years. It's been such a joy to be blessed by him and to learn from him and to hear the things that God has placed in his heart. I've been praying that we might have a spiritual awakening, but I think that becomes possible only as individuals surrender their lives afresh and anew to Christ and live the Christian life wherever you are. First, we do everything we can to follow in the steps of Jesus. We're to live a life in which we love one another, we help one another, we live according to what Jesus lived. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps us live that new lifestyle, which is one of love, gentleness, and patience, and all of these things that are the fruit of the Spirit. We must remember that we communicate the gospel by our lives as well as our lips. We live before a watching world, a world that is waiting to see if what we say is lived out in our lives. We must be living in the power of the Spirit. We must be men and women who are pure vessels for God's message. Secondly, you read His Word every day, the Bible. I know it's very difficult, but you need to start somewhere. And I'd suggest you start with the Gospel of Luke in the New Testament. And in the Old Testament, start with the very first verse, in the beginning, God. And study those passages. Make the Bible your source and your authority. Quote it frequently. Let its message be your message. Study it, meditate upon it, memorize it, trust its promises. The Word of God itself has power. And the third thing, go to your knees and pray until you and God have become intimate friends. I cannot describe to you the joy and the peace that He gives to you as a result of that daily routine that you have in prayer. Is there a lack of power in your life? Perhaps you have neglected the preparation of your life. We've neglected prayer. We've neglected God's Word in the feeding of our own souls. Whatever it is, confess it, forsake it, repent of it, and then walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and gain victory over it. 
And may God today lift our vision and may the power of the gospel break upon our world with fresh force as we are obedient to Christ's call to repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. Hallelujah.